Breaking news overnight. Washington State Fire Assistance is mobilizing for a 3,000 acre fire burning in Whitman County. Thank you for joining us here on Up With Krem. I'm Amanda Rowley. Tim and Channing have the day off. That fire is near the town of Central Ferry, which is about 50 miles south of Pullman. It started around 430 yesterday afternoon. Level two and level three evacuations are in effect right now. According to the state fire marshal's office, homes and crops, as well as railroad and critical infrastructure are threatened. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Of course, this is a developing story and we'll bring you updates as we receive them. Meanwhile, level three evacuations have been expanded for the Williams Lake fire south of Cheney. This morning, Krem 2's Malia Kamal joins us live. Malia, what's the latest update for this fire? Good morning, Amanda. Yes, I'm at Cheney Middle School, and this is the command post for emergency personnel. There are dozens and dozens of emergency vehicles here right now. Now, let's, uh, let's take a look at this map. Anyone living in this area shaded red should evacuate right away. The level two evacuations also changed. They are in yellow. Now, if you live in that zone, you need to prepare to leave. This impacts people living east and south of Badger Lake and on both sides of William Lake Road. Now, Cheney High School is open right now for evacuees. Creme 2 talked to a woman who took photos of the fire and as a nature lover, an animal lover, she's worried for their safety. Cows were right here. Whole herd of them. And they're on the move right there. I really thought they were going to burn to death. And that scared me. Fire crews are still struggling to contain the fire. Now, the Department of Natural Resources says that the fire is not controlled. They have about 10% contained by fire lines and three structures and a fire engine have been damaged so far. Now about 100 homes, barns, outbuildings are still threatened. The fire is estimated to have grown to over 1300 acres and of course uh, fire crews have several resources that they're utilizing helicopters, bulldozers and air tanks. Now we are expected to get an update today around 7. Of course we will give you those details. Stick with Krem. Stick with Krem for those details or Krem com in Cheney, Malia Kamal, Creme 2 News. Now to a wildfire in Lind. Evacuation orders have been lifted and the fire is now under control, but many are still trying to get back on their feet after leaving everything behind. The fire started just before noon yesterday and quickly grew to more than 2,500 acres. The entire town was ordered to evacuate as the fire destroyed multiple homes and buildings. One resident was in Ritzville when he learned flames were approaching his home. Right when I closed the trailer to, on the dog, getting it safe, I started running into the house. The sheriff said, no, look in the backyard. Flames are already at the backyard. Fire crews remained on the scene overnight to make sure hot spots throughout the town didn't create other fires. All evacuation orders have now been lifted. And yesterday we were tracking the air quality across the region as a result of many of these area wildfires in eastern and central Washington. As of today, glad to report that the air quality is in the acceptable range. Most, most reports are between good and moderate, and in Spokane it's in the moderate category right now. We should stay there for most of the day today. I think tomorrow might get closer to that unhealthy for some or sensitive groups category, just depending on how the, how the smoke lingers across the inland northwest. Our, of course, our temperatures are quite cool out there. We're seeing some lows in the 40s this morning, uh, but sticking with the air quality theme, I think there's just some areas closest towards that Williams Lake fire in southern Spokane County and close to Coeur d'Alene is where we're seeing that moderate air quality, but that is considered acceptable for most everybody. Well, several of the fires across our region have evacuations right now, and when it comes to wildfires, understanding the meaning of each evacuation level can be critical once flames start to spread. Here's a breakdown of each evacuation level. The three levels of evacuations. Level one, evacuation or protection alert. A wildfire threat is in your area. Consider planning and or packing in the event an evacuation becomes necessary. Level two, evacuation warning or notice. High probability of a need to evacuate. Prepare now by packing necessary items and preparing your family, pets, and vehicle for a potential departure. Move persons with mobility or medical issues and move livestock or large animals to a safe place now. 
Level 3. Evacuation request or order. Occupants of the affected area or areas are asked to leave within a specified time period by pre-designated routes. Perimeter roadblocks are typically established. Evacuate now, take your family, pets and necessary items, check in with your local Red Cross shelter in case family is looking for you, and drive with your lights on safely and slowly, remaining aware of your surroundings as you leave. Now, as these fires are actively burning, we know the situation on the ground can change quickly. But for the very latest on evacuation orders, acres burned, and even the CREM2 forecast, remember, you can always go to CREM.com. And you can also text us the word FIRE, and we'll send a link with all that information straight to your phone. Time now, 6.05. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. The two robbery suspects who ran from Spokane police before a deadly five hour long standoff appeared in court yesterday. Chris Gooch and Christopher Jones were two of the three suspects in a car fleeing a Spokane Valley robbery. Police found the suspects near downtown Spokane. They say that's when the two got out and ran away, but police arrested them. The third suspect stayed in the car and had a five hour standoff with police. That ended when officers say he started shooting at them. Two SPD officers and a Spokane County deputy returned fire, killing the suspect. Meanwhile, a 72 year old man is dead and two people injured after a head on crash on I-90 in Shoshone County. According to the Idaho State Police, the two vehicle crash happened in a construction zone near milepost 64. One of the cars had been pulling an empty dump trailer, which caught fire in the crash. Traffic on I-90 was blocked for several hours as crews worked to clear the scene and fight the fire. The cause is still under investigation. 27 conservation groups filed a petition calling on Fish and Game to disqualify Idaho from getting millions of dollars of federal conservation funds. These funds can be withheld if a state passes legislation that is at odds with the conservation intention of the Pittman-Robertson Act. Idaho's law allows the state to hire private contractors to kill wolves. Hunters can kill as many wolves as they want on just one wolf tag. And on top of that, it's legal to kill wolves by running them over with an ATV or a snowmobile. Idaho has received more than $75 million in federal conservation funds over the last five years. The final touches are being made on a new mural in Seattle that will showcase some Washington baseball history that's often overlooked. That history includes the Seattle Steelheads, a professional all-black team that played in 1946. The mural will be on display at the new tap room and restaurant across the street from T-Mobile Park. A grand opening celebration is planned for August 23rd, and that's looking at your morning rush. It's 608 on this cool Friday morning weather wise. We're seeing plenty of areas waking up to temperatures in the 40s on this August morning, including 43 out of Deer Park, 48 in Pullman as well. And it's 49 in Coeur d'Alene, just at 51 degrees, just barely above 50 degrees, but it is still quite cool out there. So just don't let that shock your system. Be prepared for that as you're stepping outside for the first time this morning. Uh, definitely a crisp a crisp early August morning out there, but at least the winds are a lot calmer overall. Those wind speeds have been no stronger than five or six miles per hour so far this morning. That'll be the case for today. The breezy and blustery conditions no more. Just got some calmer weather settling in from the north and west, but a little bit cooler as we are experiencing so far this morning. Going to make for a great dog walking forecast if I do say so myself. So it'll still be about 61 degrees at 8 a.m. and then into the 80s for the afternoon. Monkeypox is now considered a public health emergency. The federal government made that official yesterday as the nation sees an outbreak of monkeypox or MPV cases. The U.S. now counts for more infections from the virus than any other country in the world with over 7,000 cases. The declaration allows the federal agencies to access more funds, collect additional data and accelerate vaccine distribution. It also makes it easier for doctors to prescribe treatments. The vaccines are safe and they're highly effective and it's about protecting you and protecting our community. 
Monkeypox can cause fever, body aches, chills, fatigue, and pimple-like bumps on many parts of the body. In the U.S., no one has died from monkeypox during this outbreak so far, but a few deaths have been reported in other countries. Over the last decade, nationwide emergency declarations like this have been made only for the COVID-19 pandemic, the opioid crisis, and the Zika virus outbreak in 2017. Daybreak Youth Services is facing license suspension following allegations of misconduct. At 639, we break down what our investigation found. And here's the one thing you need to know about today's weather. It is a cold morning out there for August standards, but we'll warm up to some very comfortable conditions today. Yet again, temps in the low 80s.